Um, there's nobody who's sadder about this than the French government and the French um, and myself as a French member of parliament. Um, sad because I know that we have many, many, many British friends who are looking forward to some holidays in France. Um, and we, we, we want to welcome them. We want them to, to come back to France, but we have to take this decision to preserve the sanitary situation. And sad because I have a huge number of constituents who are French people who live in the UK who are exasperated by those changing rules of the borders, who are tired of those changing rules, who are exhausted because they've been looking forward for so long to come back home. Um, and that has been made more difficult. Now, the French living in the UK will always be welcome back home. They can always come back home, but they will now have to um, undergo a, a procedure which is very similar to the British procedure at the entrance, which is a negative test for departure, um, 48 hours in isolation, and then a second negative test uh, on arrival. Mm. I mean, it, when you look at the cases, there are, what, 10,000 confirmed Omicron cases in the UK. There are 240 confirmed Omicron cases in France, much smaller. But given what we know about the speed of spread, it's not going to be long before France probably finds itself in a similar position to the UK. So I just wonder how long you think it's likely to be in place. So I, I am no scientist, so, so I, I can't tell you mm. um, what the evolution of the Omicron virus um, is going to happen. But I, I will say that there are two um, rapidly happening situations here. There's one, the spread of this new variant, um, there is, on the other hand, booster shots. Um, two days ago, we vaccinated nearly 850,000 of them. Um, and so it's very clear that um, every hour which goes by, we are vaccinating tens of thousands of people um, and making those vaccinations much more effective against Omicron and, and other variants. Um, and so it's very clear that slowing down a, a process of expansion of um, the, 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 the wave, whether it's Omicron actually or whether it's Delta, is very important. So what lend, which I take to mean that you would expect the ground to be shifting quickly enough that it, these measures won't be in place for long? Well, I hope. I'm just thinking, I appreciate you're not an epidemiologist, it's just the logic of it. It's, it the, the, I think, I think that as from what I understand from our scientists, the logic of it is that we are trying much as possible to slow down a process which seems uh, um, an ineluctable process, which is the, the, the takeover of Omicron from the current variant, to be able to give booster shots to the, 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 the vast majority of the population. And at this point in time, this is happening very quickly. Uh, we, we are vaccinating essentially a bit less than a million people a day. Yeah. Um, so I think this is very important. It's essential that we get everybody um, um, who can have a booster shot and we get a, a booster shot into everybody who can have a booster shot. Um, and, and listen, I will be the first to jump out and enjoy the day those restrictions are lifted. Um, I completely realise and I'm the first uh, uh, to know how incredibly irritating they are, particularly to the French who live in, in the UK, who've lived away from home, who, who've been looking forward to this period to see their families and who suddenly have these changes at the last minute they will be able to come, but, but it will be a bit more complicated than they anticipated. And I think that the key aspect now is to provide them with all the information necessary to be able to make that trip and to Alexandra. try and get over this wave as fast as possible. Alexandra Holroyd, thank you so much.